It's about the time to talk it out. Let's talk, let's talk. It's time to talk it out. It's time to talk it out. Hey, 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 it's your boy Chill, and we are now tuned in to another great episode of Talk It Out. And as we do every day, we have myself, your host, and our co-host, my dad, the beautiful, exquisite DeBoss, and her right-hand man, the man with the master plan, you <laughs> and also I can't forget our other co-host DJ Despair. Now, along with DJ Despair, hey DJ Despair, we have um, a special guest that by no means is a stranger to the business. He's done a lot. I'm not gonna get into him. I'll let him do that. Um, he goes by the name of Terrell Blair. Terrell. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, man, listen. I, I just want to applaud you. I want to applaud you. The uh, previous interview was full of just everything. I was just like, man, I don't want to come after that. That was just an a awesome, awesome, awesome layout, you know? So I want to applaud you and thank y'all all for just having me on here, actually. Well, so, I... I appreciate you coming, um, and I, you know, I'm just honored to have you here. Um, you've done so much. I'm just going to let the people know that this man on here is a legend in like so many different ways. But I'm just going to let him give you his resume. Mr. Terrell Blair, tell the people where you're from, what you've done, what do you do, things of that nature. Um, so uh, my name is Terrell Blair. Um, I'm based out of New York, uh, from the Bronx, actually. Um, I uh, I started out um, putting out Urban Rap DVDs. I want to say 2000, uh, and they were called Hood Life Cyphers. Uh, and um, the Hood Life Cypher DVD focused on unsigned artists. Uh, eventually, of course, we, 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 we bled off into dealing with mainstream artists as well. But we also initially focused on the battle, the battle rap theme. Um, at the time that we embarked on um, putting out these DVDs, uh, the focus was to, to, to focus on uh, artists that didn't have a platform. At the time, you know, we didn't have the MySpace. We didn't have another social media uh, platform that currently out as a mouth. So like I said, 1999, 2000. Uh, and um, you know, I started on it due to the fact that you know, I had seen cops, um, you know, mess with, with some young, uh, young, young guys on the corner while they were rapping and it was just rapping. So I figured with the power that I had, you know, I, 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 I would start actually uh, bringing artists together. And in New York at the time, the focus was, you can be from one borough, but you know, a lot of times, artists wouldn't go from one borough to the other. So I said, you know what? I want to just start bringing people together, and um, artists rather. And uh, we 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 had rented a, a community center, and uh, the, the goal was to have them battle each other or just create a cipher where they rap. If they were from Brooklyn, the Bronx, Harlem, Staten Island, we brought them all together. And after they after they did what they did, it was it was imperative that they either hugged each other. Or gave each other handshakes, um, and then we started filming them. At the time, uh, like the 1999, like 1998, 1999, they had we had, you know we were dealing with the uh, big tapes, high eight, the high eight tapes, and um, you know th th it started growing. And uh, as as it began to grow, we realized that there wasn't there wasn't too many platforms on that behalf. And uh, we officially put out our first DVD. People may say 2001, but of course, uh, the, the, the project was completed around 2000, uh, late 2000, actually. And we put out our first DVD. And what was amazing about that was that putting out this DVD, at the time, bootlegging was crazy. Bootlegging was at its pure. We were bootlegged in so many states that 
that was promotion at that point. Of course, with me, I was looking at the financial aspect of it on how I can, you know, reap some of those monies or what have you. And, um, you know, of course, through trials and tribulations, we eventually learned how to distribute the DVDs on our own. And um, from 2000 to 2012, we traveled throughout different states. And this is where, you know, states and cities, this is where I actually met Chill. I asked, I met Chill, but on the last end of our DVD era, and um, at the last end, I want to say that was around 2000. I don't even remember 2011. Yeah. Um, we went to uh, Chicago, and um, you know, I, I built a relationship with him in 2020. We here, and in the process of actually doing that, there's a few other different things that came that came out actually. So I'll pass it back to you. I don't want to. I don't want to run with it. I could, man. <laughs> Well, hey, you know, uh, you've done so much. Um, it, it let the people out there know, the viewers know some of the the people you've worked with, you know, um, uh, from the gentleman that you're sitting in front of there, the picture, Fred the God. Yeah, son, yeah. And many more. Yeah, so, you know? so, you know, um, once again, because we had created a, such a beautiful platform for a lot of the unsigned artists, um, I don't know if you could possibly see that, but... Uh, Fred the Godson, who recently uh, passed from COVID, became a big rap artist, uh, not only here in New York, but throughout uh, throughout the world. He became uh, real big, but um, he there was nothing that he would do for, uh, for the movement or for myself in regards to the music. Um, we had French Montana. I can go to a different one. Um, that that came through our arena, but you know, for individuals that are, are very familiar with Fred the Godson, Fred the Godson, who recently passed over a couple of months ago, uh, man, he 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 was just a uh, 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 just a uh, uh, he was everything to us actually. Um, so yeah, I and 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 what's so amazing about this, and I never really told the story, but when when quarantine, when we when we officially uh, went into quarantine mode. Maybe a week or two prior to that, I was uh, interviewing for my producer series. I was going around interviewing all top uh, producers, uh, and um, Fred had linked me in with a a, a a producer by the name of Arsonist. And this was two weeks prior, but we were having a conversation about COVID, and um, we were just talking about man, nah, it wouldn't hit. It's not going to do but so much, and you know, of course, the er talking about a slew. Of different things in regards to it being government based i mean everything came about but lo and behold you know a couple of months down the line he died from that so that was just amazing uh, uh. so so you know i know that you've been responsible i've worked with rather people like loaded lux that are legends yeah. in the battle arena uh murder mook like you work with yeah. all the big names you know seeing them now where they're at in this business and how they've grown and all the situations that have happened you know how do, what, how does that make you feel like knowing that you are a part of these people's careers that are like known around the world you know, you know that's amazing. I um, so throughout the years, I I have I haven't really been getting interviewed. I don't I just choose not to. Um, but this question I've been getting interviewed within the last two months. I've just been opening up to a lot of the interviews, and this is the question that's been uh, thrown at me multiple times. Um, and and even down from uh, French Montana, you know, French Montana actually wanted me to interview him at the time. And during the DVD era, um. The DVD era was a was a wild game as well because a lot of the issues that were, uh, you know, looking for, you know, the promotion, not only from just my DVDs, but across the board, a lot of them had their little beats, you know what I mean, throughout the streets. And I knew everybody, you know what I mean? And, um, you know, people would ask me, how do you feel that these individuals are on different pedestals right now? I, I just say that uh, I did what I was supposed to do in, in, in regards to creating a platform. Anything after that, I'm not looking for nothing other. You know, I, I just wanted to be part of history, and I and I like the fact that I'm 
part of history. Uh, do they do they frown down on me when they do see me? No, no. Um, I just I'm happy that they're where they at. You know, when when there's when there's a, a need of a favor, or I need to get an interview, or I need to, to perform on one of my platforms, or I need to make a link with another art, they are there for me in regards to that. Um, but once again, the goal was to actually, you know, make sure that they these artists take advantage of the platform at the time and continue to grow and so there you have it chill you know yeah i'm proud of all of it. yeah so in this game there's a lot there was a lot of other dvd companies that started to follow you after how did you feel about that in the game like you know like not to name any, you know what I'm talking about. We're not gonna go there, but there's a lot of people that follow suit to what you, you were know, actually so doing. So I, I, I'm gonna get right down to it. Um, once again, this question has been thrown at me. Um, we got prime example Smack DVD, right? Now Smack is I want to applaud Smack. I just recently interviewed Smack as well, but I want to applaud him because he did what I didn't do at that time, and he increased the awareness. Uh, as of now, you know, the, the, the battle world, right? You say battle world, it's the sport as of now. And it created a platform far and beyond. It's not even it's not even a 50 state type of appeal as of now. It's a worldwide type of appeal. So with those with that DVD uh with Cocaine City, which is uh which was French Montana, you know, French Montana used to used to ride around with us actually. Um once again, like I said, you know, DJ. I, I love the fact that we spawned something and people ran with it. Um, I'm not gonna get on here and say or any other platform and say, "Oh, I'm mad at them." I no, I it, it did what it was supposed to do. You did then, and, and as you know, with being a DJ, with being an artist, with being anything, we you know we 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 we, we glean. From each other, you know what I mean. We take a little tack. We do this, we do that, and we run with it. You know? um, there's a lot of there's a lot of artists. There's a lot of companies that may say, you know what? Um, we we took a blueprint and we ran with it. That's a hood life ciphers. Or we took an idea that Terrell Blair. When I hear that, I love it. I applaud them far and beyond. I won't, and not that I won't applaud them any other time, but. I do love the fact that some acknowledge that. You know what I mean? Oh, for real, because you put me onto a lot of artists that I didn't even know about. Because for anybody to actually dig into what you've been doing has to come from that era. And getting those DVDs and all stuff, you literally have to go to New York or certain places, even Toronto, and find the bootlegs for those. You know Ooh. what I mean? So it was like, it was a different era for that because a lot of people didn't have those DVDs kicking around. Like, And if right. you did... You were the hood chat, man. You just sit there going, "What? You got that? Early? Who's this? Who's Loaded Lux? Who's the?" And then battle game changed for a lot of us because you got the um, KOTD out here in Canada, in Toronto, right? So right. That's what I mean. Like things started to follow. Yeah, yeah. Know. That's coming from someone that's in Canada. Wow, DJ Despair, y'all. Oh man, oh man. You know, um, I'm a DVA just quickly. I am. I'm actually. So I, when I started my military ground concerts, right? You see the, the the it says military ground in the back, right? This is another guy, right? That I started a, um, a platform. People may call uh, uh, a you know we call them uh sure. plat, you know um concerts, mini concerts. I'll tell right? you how I and hold so on, we wait, were give it that. Wait a minute. You know how I know you on that situation? You know the crazies? The whole movement with Fred the Godfather yeah. when they first started pop? I'm the DJ. Yes. I'm ah. the one who broke the Well, yeah, there, there you go. Like that whole little promo. That's how I met Whispers yes. and everybody down the line later. And uh Chris Rivers. Wow. So that's why you inspired me in that movement. So that's why I knew all of them when they were just breaking. Wow. Despair. Oh, man. Oh, you took it back. Yes. Yes, he knows. <laughs> he knows. Wow. Wow. I dig. So I I'm know we do. But I, I know. I, 
Wow. I, I look at oh uh, Hugh and I look at the boss. They over there like, okay, that time you cl it's clicking. But listen, I want to say this, right? <laughs> I want to say this. So despair, you know what's amazing about that, right? So when we when we started doing the military ground concerts, right? I was always still a fan of I was always still a fan of the battle rap scene, right? And what we real what what I, what we realized or what you know what we realized is that a lot of the battle rappers they got into the battle rap field or, or world rather to to increase their awareness of being an artist. Some stayed there. Some said, you know what, I'm gonna take advantage of the awareness and I'm gonna go back into my true form of being an MC or being a rapper or being an artist to that extent, right? So what I started doing was I said, you know what. Let me let me see how big of a fan base these battle rappers do have. Remember, you can you can go you, you can do a battle and a lot of people come out, but will they come out for you on a performance? Your album. And we we started a segment uh, under the umbrella of military ground called not just a battle rapper. So we had our uh, math hoffer. We had loaded lux. Uh, we have we had a slew of them, and they were able to bring the audience out, but not as big as them. Put, you know, actually battling somebody. You know what I mean? So that you know, an extension I've been doing. You know, the amalgamation has been a, a a good, good, good gel. You know. So, what is the biggest lesson that you've learned in this business, Terrell? The biggest lesson at this, uh, at th throughout it all, is to um, is to create direction and maintain creating direction, you know, and stick to your guns in regard to whatever it is that you want to do. Uh, you know, I, I, I've I've learned that even when putting out DVDs or any other thing that any other uh, business that I was involved in, you know, mammoth companies to always maintain uh, being the puppet, you know, the, the being the, the puppet master, and um. You know, because you know, I was able to create a lane, and and, and still moving forward with it, train, follow your direction, and maintain. You know, uh, designing. You know what I mean. You could design whatever it is that you would like. You know what I mean. If you put your, if you put your heart into it, if you love it, continue to move forward. Remain autonomous. You know, don't sell your soul for anything. Okay. Okay. And what advice do you have? That was a lot, my kid. I'm sorry. Oh, no, it's okay. I'm sorry. What advice do you have for upcoming hungry artists out here? If you love it, give it all. If you love it, give it your all. You know, a lot of artists are are, are, are involved or people involved in any type of a lane. They're in lot, some may get caught up in a fad. You know what I mean? If you love it, give it your all. Don't let nobody, don't let nobody throw you for a loop. You know what I mean? If if you exhaust all remedies, then cool. Just try your heart. Try your try your everything. Give it your all and continue to move forward. Do your homework as well. It's always important to understand the layout of anything that you you're, you're getting involved in. You know. The boss and you. What questions do you may have for Terrell? Uh, uh mute. Yeah, I wanted to ask, um, thank you, um, thank you, Will. I want to ask um, Terrell about, he got the military grind name. Was he in, were you in the military? No, no, the boss, you so, can I, can, so um, that's a saying, right? You know, I'm militant at all, all times. So, you know, military grind is that you, you grind it to the eighth, to the 20th power, you know what I mean? And what's so crazy about oh, this, okay. right? Is that it became a saying, and now everybody say it. So with me, key with Brandon. So as you see, I started. I just started putting on shirts. You know, everything. I created a concert. I said I'm a Brandon, and I ran with it. Oh, okay. Well, I'm sorry, I'm a real girly girl. Sometimes you know things. <laughs> No. What are you gonna say? Well, I just asked this military. 
Hey, you, hey, what question do you have, you? David Spears looking at me. David Spears. David Spears. David Spears. David Spears. Maybe the people thinking that, too. I don't know. You know? Hey. The boss, great, great question. Great question, the boss. Thank you. Hey, Terrell, we always do the look. That's the look. That is <laughs> When he looks at the camera, you know what? Well, I seen it. <laughs> That's what we do. Like, okay, really. Wait, have to educate me a little bit more. You don't see I'm not a person. You, you, you see, he's like talking to you right now is like one of my bucket lists, right? Because it's like. Nah, seriously, man. This guy started so much with breaking artists and putting people in position that nobody thought about doing, especially in 89. Oh. Like, you gotta really start thinking, like, this is like putting people on DVD with interviews of, like, people that nobody knows that are now famous. Right. You know, there's a lot of rappers in the game that's done this, but they never released it. They never released this. Oh, okay. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, and he ended up finding a platform that showed you how to distribute before the internet. Okay. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of guys start to fight. Yeah. He got to send me a t-shirt now, me and you, so we can I like the t-shirt. I like that t-shirt. I got you. You got to understand this. Yes. Like, and so, like, the whole military like movement. Military grind. Yo, D-Boss, like, the whole military movement is, like, all artists and, like, DJs and now, our circles move militant. Like, we're all working together. Oh, yes. Okay. Okay. Right, so it's not 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 one hand's better than the other. Everybody, if we work oh, okay. together on a on a passion, it builds. Because there's like, look at to us to this yeah. day, we're legends in the game. So we're still okay. here, even though a lot of people made a lot of moves off a lot of us. We're not mad at that. We're happy right. they made it. Now let's find the next one. Well, you see, you see, it's like I asked that question because maybe a lot of other people were thinking the same thing as me. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So. That's and that's what that's what's key. It's about creating dialogue. It's creating dialogue. If I I, I welcome that I welcome all aspects of asking questions. Let's create dialogue. Right. It's about branding. It's right. about branding, right? <laughs> it's okay. about talking you know, it imagine up. asking somebody about a thing and they couldn't define it. It's about talking it out. Yeah. Talking it out. <laughs> well, see now, Terrell, we know exactly what you do and what people can come to, even though you've been doing it for a long time. And, you know, suppose a lot of other people probably didn't understand. But now they're like, oh, this is what his brand does. So you got it. Yeah, and now you have a whole new fan base out in the Caribbean, yes. out in Canada. You know, the balls are huge are out there in Toronto, DJ Despairs in Winnipeg. Wow. You know, wow. and, I mean, man, I'm just getting a headache thinking about it. But I I'll, tell it. You, I'll tell you this. I got one last question for you. And this is the cream cool. of the crop cool. question that I ask everybody, Okay. And it's a question that, in your case, may it have to be censored, okay, buddy? You're on TV, so we got to be censored, all right? <laughs> so, I'm a checklist for my wordplay. Okay, and there you go. So, Terrell, what is the craziest moment that you have ever experienced? doing the DVDs and all that stuff because it's different than the studio because you're out and about now with the people. So I know you got a serious crazy moment. <laughs> oh, I have some. I have some. Listen, so I want to say this. You know, when when they, when you hear urban bass, right? You hear urban bass uh, DVDs. It, it's broad. You know, so of course, you know, people think that they they think that we could allow just anything. Uh, one of the things we didn't allow, we didn't allow guns. We didn't run with the sex aspect of, you know, all the other stuff. So there's a lot of stuff that I'm not going to elaborate, but I'm going to go. When I was in Chicago, right? So when, when I was in Chicago, they told me not to go to the south side of Chicago. Had to so be a Chicago. Me, I, huh? 
<laughs> Had to be a Chicago moment. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to simplify it. I'm going to simplify it. So they said, Terrell, don't go to, after 8 o'clock, do not go to, don't go to the south side. Now, I'm a businessman as well. So, you know, a lot of them artists was paying for slots to get on the DVDs. And at the time, this was my crack DVD brand. So, uh, Scooter, Scooter, which was, uh, which is, um, uh, oh man, what's the name artist? Uh, Twister. Twister's artist. Mm -hmm. he, yeah, Twister's artist, Scooter said, meet me over there. So it's like nine o'clock. All right, we go over there, we go over there. Man, now I'm from New York. This is 2011, it's one of right? I'm, it's like 40 people out there. And some of them are waving guns, right? Like, so it's a few people in the car with us. I'm like, right? I'm, I'm like, I'm trying to be cool. I'm like, damn. So I get a phone with Scooter. He said, just come in the block. I said, you sure, man? I said, you know, we got big cameras, man. He said, nah, Terrell, you all right. So I go in the block. He said, listen, let's go to the corner where it's more light. I said, more light. I said, there's guns out there, man. Right. So, listen. So, now, this is not up the streets alone. I'm chilling. Now, chill. Chill. You know Jay Diamonds, right? Right. So, Jay Diamonds was my point person. He brings me out there. You know, he used to live in Chicago, but he moved to Wisconsin. Right. So, we walking down the block, Jay Diamond's all cool. He like, he get to the corner. These guys just, yeah, man. The gun, I said, oh my God, right? So I go up to the right. I said, listen, fellas, listen, fellas. I know we got the cameras out. I said, but I can't put those guns on these cameras, man. They like, nah, man, you know all this crazy stuff, right? So old timer was like, Yo, man, why would y'all want to, if y'all gangsters, why would y'all want to have live guns on the camera? Anyway, they start putting the guns away. I turn around, Jay Diamonds, my point person, he's supposed to be holding the camera. He leaves me. Ah! Oh, my God. Yo, oh, my so God. Nobody yo. <laughs> so, yo, so. Oh. I turn around. Like, I, I walk to the I walk to the van, right? I say, I go like this. I say, look what he do. He do this. So, 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 I, the street guy that was the street guy that was there that was taking around us around to all the neighborhoods. He was like, Terrell, give me the camera. I'll, I'll do it. So we started filming, right? After if, after we did the filming, right? Well, we in a van, nobody saying nothing, right? They drive us back to the car where we initially parked. I get in the I get in the car with Jay Diamonds, right? I, I just started laughing, and he said, "This is no bull." He told you, he said, "Well, Terrell, I ain't even gonna lie to you, man. I was scared." I said, "Scared." I'm in your town, and you talk about you scared. You just left me dry. You know, for me, it was a moment, man. That was one of my moments, oh, man. God. That was one of my all right. moments. All right, all right, all right. Um, I'm stuck in a pickle, as they would say now, because when Jay Diamond sees this interview, <laughs> <laughs> I told everybody. <laughs> oh, oh, oh my God. Okay. I'm going to send it to him personally. Oh. So the lesson I'm that to him today, kids, do not go to Chicago with someone that you do not know that well. Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's like coming to Toronto. Right? <laughs> oh my right. god. Right. <laughs> right. Oh, <my> god. <laughs> oh, 
You know how many phone calls I've gotten for both cities, and I haven't been in either of them at the time it was going down? Like, seriously, man. You, right. You, just, you can't just go anywhere. And I tell that to artists all the time. When yeah. you're touring, when you're doing anything, right. be careful where oh. you're going. <laughs> seriously. Yeah. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. The street, the street guy, the street, the, the individual that we had, he was part of a gang. You know, he had left it, but so they gave him the prop. They gave him that prop. But we were able to go in there. You know what I mean? Like any any city or city that I went to, I always spoke to a point person because I wanted to go knee deep into the neighborhood. So yeah. And you see, that's a thing in the industry that a lot of people don't know, and that's why I'm glad you pointed at that because. A lot of people ask why certain people are allowed to move around certain ways and go to different cities and stuff, and because there is point persons, and a lot of guys don't know that, and that's why when you hear these things about the games, like ah, I can walk around anywhere in the hood for real. You serious? <laughs> like, I'm, like, I'm like, I'm about to see that. <laughs> like, <yeah. laughs> I'm asking you if you can walk around. <laughs> you can yeah, Hugh, you should come to Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I should. <laughs> I'm going to the south side. <laughs> <laughs> come on, you come with me, you. <laughs> you can hold the camera, you. <laughs> right. I can tell you stories about New York. <laughs> yeah, yes, you could, you. Yes, yes. <laughs> Oh my God! Okay, so so Terrell, tell everybody out there, you know, uh, your social medias, where they can contact you if they wanted you to come to their neighborhood and shoot a DVD. Just don't bring. I'm not doing that no more. <laughs> <laughs> I gave it up. That was too. That's my. That was error. I want you to get a DVD. What I'll do? Hey, you, you yeah, can shoot a DVD for us at Caribbean Liquid Lunch. Yo, we gonna yeah, talk. I, I'll do that. I'll do that. <laughs> Whoa. Um, but, but, but yeah, <laughs> but yeah, so tell me what you find, you, buddy. All right, so um. First of all, I have a website that has everything on interviews, everything. Uh, it's um, hlmmedia.com. Uh, my, uh, my, my Instagram, I am Terrell Blair. Uh, my Facebook is uh, facebook.com slash Terrell Blair. And, and I have an email, Terrell, T-E-R-R-E-L-L dot Blair, B-L-A-I-R at gmail.com. Hold up! Can I? Can I? Can I just say this? Uh, can I say one more thing? Go right ahead. Um. So during the quar during quarantine, uh, I started doing a lot of um live Instagram live album reviews, and it's called the stories behind the song. So uh, I have a ch I had a chance to interview a lot of the artists via um Instagram live, but I also put the stories behind those songs, like tonight. Like tonight, I mean, of course, this will be recorded, but I got uh, Granddaddy IU. He put out his first album in 1990. So I'm, I am so anticipated to ask him about the specific songs that he put out. So I've been having a good time. I done interview about 40, 40 to 50 artists so far since March to now, and I'm having a great time with it. Yes. Awesome, awesome. Hey, Terrell, I am going to inbox you yes. on Instagram. We're going to Please. talk. Trust me. Let's do that. Let's do that. It's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. Yes, do that. Let's, let's, let's exchange numbers. The boss, Hugh, I appreciate you all. <laughs> we do too. <laughs> all right. So with all of that being said, Hey, remember, hey, stay tuned for tomorrow's great episode of Talk It Out. And remember, don't go to the south side of Chicago after 9 o'clock. And if you do go to the south side of Chicago after 9 o'clock, 
just when you see the guys, tell them, hey, fellas, let's just talk it out. It's about the time to talk it out.